folks welcome back to the channel and um, doing a bit of electronics this time or taking a look at some what I'm doing is uh, having a look at these which I've got these all around the home it's the hive light uh, and we've got a failed one so we're going to see what's gone wrong So as you know, I've done a few hive videos already. I'll put them in the description and I'll link them below. But um, this one, I mean, this one's in, it was in use quite a lot in the house. Um, it was one of the hallway lights, so it's on most nights through quite a few hours. And after, I think it's a year and a half, it's failed. And it's interesting failure, actually. It's still showing up in the app. You can tell the app to turn it on, turn it off, dim it, set schedule, everything like that, but just no light comes out of it at all. So my suspicion is the LED matrix on it, or whatever type it has inside, has failed, but the electronics hasn't. So what I'm going to do, take it apart and uh, let's see what's actually inside it. And see, see what the electronics do, see if we can spot what's gone wrong with it. thing to do is to get it apart. Now I think, looking at this now, I'm using a blunt spodger to try to get in between the plastic, because this is a, it's a, it's, it's a reasonably soft plastic, and I'm thinking I can prise it apart somewhere along here. What I might need to do is use a bit of heat, so let's bring the heat gun in, heat up all around here, and see if we can separate the glue. Starting to melt the plastic a bit. If all else fails, we'll just cut it open. What I'll do is uh, we'll pause there, I'll get this apart, it's starting to come apart so hopefully this will continue and we'll get inside. Okay that took a reasonable amount, I ended up cutting around it to get the plastic casing off all the bits now we're inside it and I think I can see the failure already so quite interesting it looks like this sticks out this looks like an antenna so that's probably to help the signal and then we've got 
this series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine LEDs around. And let's see if the camera can focus on this one here. And you can see there's a black dot in the middle of that LED. The camera doesn't focus very well on it. And so that one looks like it's failed. Now it's got a couple of screws on there, so let's unscrew that. Let's take a look. There is a bit of what looks like potting glue or something on the outside. I don't really want to damage this board though. I'd like to get this out in one piece. So there's the LED driver board, push through connector on the top there, and then in here we've got the electronics which look like they slide in, so I suspect if we take the bottom out here, this will all pull out. So by heating the two pads, it's come out, you can see it's just the standard, it's a pretty typical way of doing things. Just a couple of pins, push down the middle and solder onto the back there. So now we've got the circuit board and there's a lot more on this board than I expected. So let me take a look and we'll figure out what's going on down there. close in on the on the board so I think what we've got is we've got two separate parts of the board going on here we've got one which is the main circuitry here which I thought would just be a power converter but it looks more to it than that and then there's this daughter board here which I think will be the radio chip the equipment. Now remember, this board won't directly talk to my Wi-Fi. This will talk to the hub, which I believe uses a Zigbee type protocol. So, by the looks of it, we've got in here, I'm going to guess that is a fuse type uh, sacrificial resistor, something like that. So, I'm going to have a look and see if I can work out what this board is doing and I'll come back to you but whilst whilst I'm doing that just take you in on the LED board and I think this is probably our faulty chip now what we could do it's a one of these metal back to dissipate heat what I could probably do is probe it and see if we can get some power out of any of the LEDs see if any of them still light up whether they've all failed in different ways So this is all very small stuff, but you can see on here, we've got the main, so I, I desoldered this off the board. 
got the main chip here. Timing crystal. And you can see the antenna winding in the piece here. And interestingly, underneath, and this does show that it's a kind of off the shelf board, we've actually got labels for three volt power, ground, pulse width modulation, because you can dim and brighten these, and uh, ADC. You can also see, interestingly, there's some other pads that aren't used. Reset, ground, three volts. Is that TX and RX? So I think this board is a generic transmitter receiver board that they're using in this situation. And that is then sending the data onto this board, which contains the step down power, so the three volts to power the smaller board. These two pins go off to our LED cluster. And I think the rest of this, uh, that looks like a full bridge rectifier at the input here. Obviously we've got some smoothing through capacitors, we've got a choke up here. So I think most of this is dedicated to power. So we're going to look up some of the chips and just add some notes as well and see what they do. So after a bit of digging, this is an MT7816, which is a dimmable PWM uh, LED driver chip. So that one will be receiving the signal from here to control the brightness of the LED and the, uh, the rest of this. So yes, that is a full bridge rectifier. Then the voltage step down circuitry. This chip is then powered and takes the control from this little RF receiver board, which we'll have a look at the chip on that one. So this is all power components for the actual driving of the LED. So that's that's one part of the board. And by the looks of it, I don't think anything on here has failed. I think it is purely down to our faulty LED. And I'm going to guess these are all in series. So when one of the chips blows open circuit, which I think this one has done, it's going to take the whole string out. Let's have a look and see what this chip is. The chip on here, the JN5189, is a uh, it's a complete chip that runs using the 2.4 gigahertz Zigbee protocol. And actually, the chip is pretty smart. It's got everything it needs over the air, updatable, um, and it has various digital and analog I/O as, as well as PWM built in. So this chip is the real powerhouse that that makes the hive bulb work. So using the 2.4 gigahertz Zigbee network, I've always had a bit of a problem with Zigbee networks because it shares the same frequency, 2.4 gigahertz, as most Wi-Fi adapters as well. And the channels do actually overlap, so you can get interference between Zigbee and Wi-Fi. So there's another thing to watch for with your hive solution. If you do find that either your Wi-Fi suffers or your Zigbee hive system suffers, it might be because they're too close to one another or the channels are overlapping, so it's just something to watch for. But yes, very smart chip 
that's on board here that does all of the main heavy lifting for the hive active light so there we go there's not a lot more that i can determine from this to be honest because it's fairly obvious that we've had an led failure on it i'd be interested to know from you whether you've had similar whether this is a common failure with the hive system um if it is what you can do is run them at a lower brightness constantly run them at less than a hundred percent on the hive app that would increase their lifespan potentially if the leds are being overdriven a little bit so there we go that's the inside of the hive light i hope you've enjoyed this video please do put a comment down the bottom if this has been useful and remember to subscribe before you go